it is indeed a great pleasure to be able to talk to you who are uh, uh, the very important uh, 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 medical personnel uh, and non-medical personnel to help the cancer patients. Uh, my task today is to uh, try to uh, discuss with you what is cancer, how can we uh, treat cancer properly in the era of the 21st century. When I was trained in, in England uh, uh, almost uh, 20 years ago, I was trained by Professor Jonathan Baxman and Professor Carol Sikora at uh, Hammersmith Hospital, University of London. At that time, we don't have many options for the treatment for cancer. But 20 years later, we have uh, many breakthrough uh, uh, technology innovatives that can be used for the patient. In collaboration with the uh, treatment and the new technology, we are able to help many patients. Unfortunately, despite a very innovative treatment, we still are very unfortunate because uh, many of the cancer patients, finally, they recur and they die from cancer. This is very important as palliative care to uh, assist the patient through the very final uh, stage of the disease. Uh, peacefully. Uh, firstly, I would like to tell you about the uh, cancer in the 21st century, what we achieve. And on the second part, we have a video so that we can uh, share and discuss uh, our uh, idea and attitude together. And on the last hour, we can uh, discuss about uh, what, what we know and what we learned today and what we can apply this knowledge and, tech and, and technology to uh, improve the patient care. Let me introduce a very first uh, a concept. This is a very important concept. If you want to deal with cancer, you have to know what is cancer, how cancer occurs. Let me start with some of our volunteers. Uh, in, your, uh, in your opinion, what is cancer? Can you answer me? What is, what is cancer? Cancer is um, the abnormal growth of tissue. The abnormal growth of tissues? Oh, thank yes. you. It is very important to know what we are dealing with cancer. Cancer is abnormal cell. Actually, cancer is our, our uh, body cell. Uh, it has a genetic similar, up over 95% are similar to the normal cells. That's why it's part of our body that they, uh, they can destroy our uh, body by something that show it this slide. There are 10 things that uh, cancer uh, is different from the normal cell. You want to know cancer, you have to know the normal cell, and you have to know what is the difference between cancer and the normal cell? This is 10 uh, things that are different between cancer and normal cell. Firstly, it will uh, grow uncontrolled. It will keep going, growing, growing, and growing. And finally, it will destroy the body. And when, when you have a major organ failure, the patient dies. And secondly, it has an abnormal metabolism. If you look at the newspaper and you look at the alternative medicines. Many and many alternative medicines, they use one uh, technique to structure or to beat cancer by not eating many types of food, including protein, sugar, because they believe that the cancer will consume that uh, products and it will uh, uh, grow uncontrollably. We call it abnormal metabolism. It's only halfway true. Scientifically, it tells us that it is real, but in the real life practice or in clinical situation, we don't have any good way to overcome the second uh, problem. Thirdly, it will signaling to the cell. It will keep going and tell the cell to grow, to grow, and to grow. That's very important. If we can cut down the signaling pathway, we can stop cancer. And we really have many type of treatment available at this time. Fourthly, it will divide all the time. For two to four, four to 
add, add to 16, 16 to 30, uh, uh, 22, and finally become a big a, a tumor mass, and that will eliminate or it will destroy uh, the normal uh, major organ, for example, brain, causing brain failure, respiratory failure, a liver failure, or even kidney failure, and ultimately the patient will die. The, the DNA is the, the, the very important thing because it will dictate what, what, we, what, our, what our, our behavior, what the cell behavior will be. Uh, when, the gen, when the DNA has been uh, in, un, unstable, it will keep changing, we call it mutation all the time. It will change the phenotype of the characteristic of the cells all the time, from drug sensitive to drug resistant from a slow growing to rapidly growing tumor. And finally, the patient having problem. And it will spread. The difference between the benign tumor and cancer is metastasis. The benign tumor grows slowly, genetically stable, and it doesn't spread. But cancer will spread at the very early stage. If one is spreading, it will cause a, a very a serious problem. That is the major organ failure, and the patient will die because of uh, the major organ failure. Metastasis is the most common cause of death in cancer patients. Inflammation. Do you, do you believe that inflammation is the cause of cancer? For example, a patient have a chronic, has a chronic wound at, at, in, at the big toe for 20, 30 years. Later, it will change to cancer. Inflammation is a cause and the cancer promote, pro, uh, promotion. A second very interesting uh, uh, issue is tuberculosis. In Thailand, uh, we have many, many tuber tuberculosis, which is increasingly uh, uh, high and high because of the HIV infection. Because a patient will have HIV infection, maybe you have to take care of some of these patients they have a low immunity and they will keep tuberculosis in their body all the time. Sometimes they can get rid of the, the, the infection and then the infection will come back. After getting repeatedly infected by the, the bacteria, the lung will be damaged and there are many scars in the lung. Once the patient has a scar in the lung or the chronic wound in the lung, it will change to cancer. We call it scar tumor. This is one cause of a lung cancer. Activation of blood, blood vessels. Cancer is a very quickly uh, uh, living organism. It, uh, it has a big uh, size of the cell. It will eat all the time. It needs a lot of energy. Once they need energy, they have to get the energy from our body because the cancer cannot, cannot uh, produce the energy by themselves. They cannot produce active nutrients by themselves. They need food from, from the patient. So one way to deliver uh, the nutrition to the cancer is by blood supply. The cancer will activate growth factor that, so that the, the, the growth factor will activate the, the formation of the blood vessels and, the, and bringing the new nutrient, bringing oxygen, and it is a pathway for cancer to spread to other organs. So one way to beat cancer is to stop the growing the blood supply. Cancer is immortal. It looks like a vampire. If you look at the movie Vampire, cancer is very similar. It, it, it can uh, grow, it can live forever. That's why it's very important to, to kill cancer, even chemotherapy. One, one of the mechanisms of the resistance is immortal, immortalization because uh, the, it, it will not be a cure by chemotherapy, and we know many of the genes that are causing Im, 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 immortal of the cancer cells, such as the BCL2 genes, for example. And lastly, if you want to get cancer, you must have a bad immunity, because immunity is something is very vital to your life. If you live longevity, you must have good immunity. It's in your body. You don't know him or, you or her, but they know you well. You have to protect your, your life all the time. If you want to get healthy, you must have a very good immunity. 
you want to stay away from cancer, you must have a good immunity. If the patient has cancer, the patient must have intact immunity. This is very, something very important. Interestingly, I've been asking so many, many uh, uh, patients, they don't know about immunity at all. They know very little, or they know only part of them. That's why there's many uh, different concepts of cancer treatment. You have to know the basic principle of uh, what we call hallmark of cancer. You know that, it's easier for you to uh, take care of the patient from the genetic level to the cellular level, to the clinical level, to the patient level, and to the society. Next slide. Cancer is a multi-step process driven by genetic alterations. There are many, many steps. When you see the patient in front of you, it's only one stage. Like you're watching a movie, there are many scenes. It's only one scene. You have to Im use your imagine to go through all the uh, stages of cancer development. Regardless of what stage you are facing, you have to see through all the stages. You have to see, look at patient as a multi-dimensional problem. It's not only cancer at one step. There are many, many steps. For example, when you go back home, you open your mouth, look at your mouth. If you're a smoker, for example, one pack per, per day for uh, 20 years, you have a threshold of having cancer it's causing genetic damage in your mouth. You can see it, but you cannot see anything wrong because it is inside of the cell, it's genetic change. We call it pre-malignant lesions. After you, you are being activated by uh, several type of uh, cancer-causing agents, then they will change. And one, once you have the critical genes, those that it will change to cancer. You can get oral cancer, lung cancer later. So the normal uh, view of the cells or the, uh, or the figure, it doesn't represent what is really goes wrong because it is inside the cell. You have to see it at multiple scenes, hence a multi-step. This is animal model showing that it really exists in the animal model and in the patient model. Next slide, please. This is just a slide show you the example of what happened when there's some genetic damage. If you have the genetic damage up to the critical uh, genes or to the critical dosage, the cell will be changed. Go through a 10 hallmark of cancer, de depending on what type of cancer you have. And after that, uh, they will be changing from the genetic to morphology to the number of the cell. The cell will keep growing, 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 and increasing in number, and it will uh, damage or will repress, destroy the normal organs. Once a normal organ has been destroyed, the body cannot work properly, and finally the patient will die, regard, uh, depending on which cancer and which uh, uh, location the cancer spread to. There are three important genes. Now, actually, there are many genes are involved in. We have oncogenes, we have tumor suppressor genes, and we have uh, uh, DNA mismatch repair genes. We have in three important genes. The, DNA, the, gene, the cancer causing genes is, is a very important. If once it's activated, it will make the cell go into a cell cycle and it will be perfect all the time. Finally, the cancer will, will occur. The tumor suppressor gene is something that will block the cancer growth. If you have a balance of this, in, in Chinese medicine, we call yin and yang. There are two things that will keep, keep things in, into balance. By Dr. Uh, Fu, Fu Chen, many thousand years ago, yin and yang, there are two different parts. If you can check, can keep this thing in control, you're fine. You want to do palliative care, you have to keep control. Suppress the tumor suppressor genes uh, and activate the tumor uh, suppressor genes and uh, make sure that the DNA mismatch repair gene is okay. There are many things that they can do, for example, food. Even a little bit of wine have got uh, a respiral that will has uh, blocked the blood vessel formation, for example. There are many things that can be used or modified once you know the mechanism, but we need scientific proof from the clinical study. Uh, next slide, please. How cancer occur? This is very important. This is the DNA. DNA located in the chromosome. The chromosome, uh, half of them from mother, half of them from father, and it will located in the nucleus of the cell. 
and will tell the self what the self need to be. Whatever will be, will be, depend on, on the tumor uh, genes. Uh, next slide. This is just uh, the picture to show you how uh, cancer arrives in the human body. Firstly, you have something called cancer-causing uh, agents. 85% uh, is from the environmental factor. About 5 to 15% is uh, genetic or uh, hereditary. It comes from the father and mother. The very uh, uh, good model to show you is uh, Angelina Jolie model. She married to Brad Pitt uh, many years ago, having five, six children, I'm not sure. And last year, uh, she went to uh, 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 California to a clinic and discuss about the doctor. The doctor sent her to check for her uh, hereditary genes called BRCA1 and BRCA2 from a company called Myriad Company. And after that, it showed that she had mutation of BRCA1 genes. BRCA1 genes is very important. If you have mutation, it will cause cancer. She has a, a, a 87% chance of having uh, breast cancer and 50% chance of having ovarian cancer. So after discussing seriously with Brad Pitt, her husband, and she said, okay, fine, go ahead. Get rid of them, take them out. Take the breast, two of the breast. And Jayla Jolie, one of the most beautiful girls in the world, and you have to take out both of the breast, take out the ovary. So what, what, what need to be done after that? Uh, after discussing with the doctor, her husband, she decided briefly to take everything out. That can cause cancer. And the operation take eight hours in February 2013. It take eight hours to take out the ovary and do the breast reconstruction. And now she's even look more, much better than before because of the, uh, the breast augmentation after the surgery. And she get rid of the genes, uh, of the cancer causing gene in the breast and the ovary. So she may be safe from having breast cancer and ovarian cancer, but she's still susceptible to other uh, cancer. But this is two of the most important cancer. 15% is from genetic and, and the environmental factor. If you uh, stay in this room for many hours, do you know what type of cancer you would get? We call it sick building syndrome. You work in the building all the time. Do you know what type of cancer you will get if you work in the in your, your workplace is a building and you do have to work several hours in the building lung cancer where it come from which environment okay so uh, it's chronic irritation so inflammation is a cause of cancer and secondly uh, if you look at the building that is older than 30 years it, it all the wall and the the, 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 the ceiling can uh, maybe uh, com may, may be, be composed of what we call asbestos. Asbestos is fire proofing agent, so that they, they want to keep it from fire proof. And that, if you, if you inhale the asbestos in your body, you have a chance of having uh, lung cancer or the cancer of the, uh, of the, the, the pleura. That's another two things very important. And do you know that there are over 12% or a dozen of infection that can cause cancer? What is the most common cause of uh, infection related uh, uh, cancer or infection causing cancer? What is the most common infection associated cancer? This is a very important question because if you cannot protect yourself, how can you help others? Papillomavirus, no. The most important can, uh, infection that can cause cancer in Thailand is hepatitis B virus. One out of every uh, uh, 12 uh, Thai walk in the street having been a carrier of this infection, hepatitis B viral infection. And liver cancer is the most common cause of death in both male and female in Thailand because of the hepatitis B viral infection. So that's the most common. Papillomavirus is common, but 
now. It, it can cause cervical cancer, but cervical cancer is number two after breast cancer. So the incidence of papilloma virus is lower. So you can try to find out what is the rest of the 10 cancer uh, causing agent that is infection because it's very close to you. You have to be very careful. There are so many things. And if you get cancer causing agent, it will cause uh, cancer. And uh, if you are unlucky, you have your tumor suppressor gene. Your tumor suppressor gene uh, has been destroyed. You were even having problem. And you have oncogene cancer causing genes and you cannot repair your DNA. You finally, you will get cancer. After your immunity cannot get rid of the mutated cells. Uh, next slide please. This is a, a, demonstra a demonstration the, 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 to demonstrate you how cancer can be, uh, uh, can be caused by a genetic damage or genetic mutation. Firstly, you have oncogenes. The oncogenes, usually it will keep check in balance in your body. But whatever causes infection, mutation, and you have mutated uh, genes, it will be activated. It looks like an accelerator. It will just keep uh, the, the, the cell to be keep going. And if you don't have a good tumor suppressor gene, which it, 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 it behaves like a break to stop the cell from growing, you have activation of oncogenes, the cell will divide uh, uncontrollably, and you have in, uh, in act, uh, uh, inactivation of tumor suppressor genes. The gene will no longer block the, to the, the cancer uh, uh, growing, then you're in trouble. The cell will keep going and growing. And lastly, if you don't have a DNA mismatch repair you to, to, to fix the, this problem, the patient will have cancer. There are three types of genes. Uh, next slide, please. This is something that to look into detail of the DNA that had been damaged. We, now we have a technology. We can do whole human genome sequencing with it one week. It costs about a, a 200,000 baht only. It's not expensive. We can do the whole human genomes and we can do the whole tumor genome. We know exactly what mutation. The technology is not a problem. The analysis is a problem. You need a big, very big, big uh, mainframe computer to analyze all this information because it's a lot, enormous number of, of information. It's, it, it's in the process. Some of the hospitals, they're trying to bring this technology to make it available uh, for the patient. Uh, next slide, please. When the DNA has been damaged, there's another group of genes, we call it DNA mismatch repair to, to repair the DNA. If everything is okay, you will not have a problem. So many of the, of, 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 of the uh, people who walk in the street, there's a lot of air pollution in Bangkok and you have to inhale all this uh, uh, pol uh, pollutants into your body. You don't have cancer because you can get rid of it. You can fix, you can repair your DNA by this very important gene. DNA mismatch repair genes. If you have uh, this, uh, if this gene doesn't work, you, will, you have problem and you will have cancer. One of the examples is colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is number uh, three in uh, Thailand now. Number three to number four now because we consume the Western uh, uh, food. And the Western food, they contain many cancer-causing agents in the Western food. And if you don't have a very good genes to fix it, you will have problems. You have colorectal cancer at the age of 50 years old. That's the most common incidence of having colorectal cancer. Next slide, please. Now, when you know cancer, there are many types of cancer. All your body can get cancer. Any, any side you have cell, you have DNA, they get mutated, you get cancer from, the, from head to toes. There's only some of the organ in your body that cannot get cancer because there's no cells. Which part of your body that does not have cells, that it will never get cancer? Which, or, which, part, which organ in the body? Your hair, your hair will never get cancer because it has only the keratin, that's not nothing else. Secondly, your nail. Your nail, there's no cell, but the nail bed, there's some cell. Behind the nail, there's some cell. The nail, they don't have cell. 
How about your, 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 your teeth, you have, can you get cancer? Yes, because the teeth be, be, be below the teeth, there's some cell. We call, we call it organ uh, to blastoma. It, it, it exists. There are only two organs in your body that doesn't contain uh, cells and they, they will not get cancer. The rest of them, they get cancer. We have uh, hundreds of types of cancer, but all the cancer that originate from what I tell you, the hallmark of cancer, secondary to genetic damage. Uh, next slide, please. The chemotherapy is a really a big problem because it is non-specific. It will kill the cancer cell with damage the normal cell. It's been used 60 years ago. It's like using a machine gun fight, uh, shooting your body. It will destroy your normal cell, destroy the cancer cell. Unfortunately, uh, it's still the standard treatment in many type of disease. The another thing very important in your bone. If you need longevity, you want to live up to 100 years, you have to take care of your brain well, you have to take care of your heart well, and you have to take care of your bone well. Otherwise, at 100 years, you will be bedridden or you have wheelchair dependent and your body structure will be changed. Bone is very important, even in cancer patients, because bone, there are many things in the bone. It, it produces all, all the, the blood cells. It also uh, be a structure of your body and it also produces growth promoting agent to the cancer cell. If you want to test a testy noodle, the way to cook noodle, you have to put the, the bone and bone marrow from, from a chicken or from pig, whatever. That indicates that, that bone is a very nutritious uh, source uh, in, in the body. And cancer like it. Cancer like the bone. Because the bone will produce nutrition to cancer. It will produce a growth factor to the cancer cell. It will promote cancer growth. The one way to stop cancer is to take care of your bone well. It will uh, help you to fight cancer. That's something I think not many people know. Okay, next slide. This is what happened. This is the bone cell. We have different type of bone cell because osteoblast is the cell that will uh, produce uh, a bone and osteoclast, it will, des it will destroy bone. So if you, if they check balance between osteoblast and osteoclast, you have a beautiful body. Otherwise, your bone will be very deformed and you cannot even walk. So the balance between osteoclast and osteoblast. Cancer is very smart. It has been exist over 10,000 years and indicating that it has a very uh, strong evolution. Otherwise, it will be distinct by now. It's still getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And this is one way how the genus cancer cell uh, uh, take advantage of your body. It will uh, ask the bone cell to help them to promote cancer growth and spreading. What they do? They will produce many uh, growth factors to stimulate the growth of the, the cell, the osteoclast and osteoblast, so that it will make a very good environment for the cancer cell to stay and to grow and to divide and to survive in the body. So the sci uh, scientists are uh, smart enough to know this secret. So they know that bone is a problem, that it will be the target that we can uh, uh, treat cancer cell. So we have to cut this vicious cycle one way to cut this vicious cycle is to use a drug that will uh, kill the osteoclast. We call it pyrophosphate. There, there are three generations already. Once we can uh, block the osteoclast that promote growth to the cancer cell, we can control cancer. And we have a newest antibody called Dinosumab. It will block the growth factor uh, uh, receptor that will activate osteoclast. So we have many ways. One way to stop cancer is to stop the, the bone uh, from uh, helping the cancer cell to grow in your body. Uh, next slide, please. The most common cause of death from cancer is metastasis, or the spreading of cancer to adjacent or to uh, uh, the distant uh, organ. How can they get into the, the other uh, tissues is by going to the blood supply, the blood vessel. We have two types of blood supply, the vein and the artery. Can you imagine which system the cancer will go to, the artery or the vein? Artery, artery. why artery? Nutritious. 
If you have a time after you finish your course today, go to KFC, try some chicken, and try to to to, to take out the artery and and the vein. It, it it's like a, a long tube in in the chicken, and you can you can compare. A very thin wall is the vein. A very thick wall is the artery. You can test it, and you can imagine. For the artery, it's very difficult to chew, but for the vein, easy to chew. Artery is very difficult for the cancer cell to get into it because it's very strong, very thick. So when the cancer go to the blood blood vessel, we call it hematogenous spread. It will go to the vein, and all the vein in your body will go to to the heart, and the heart will pump the blood to the lung, and that is a salt that will go to the lung. We call it lung metastasis. It will go to the uh, the vein and go to the the right side of the heart and go to the lung and stay there. What another very important thing that the cancer uh, uh, can can be spread is by formation of the new blood vessels. Cancer is a smart cell. It can produce a growth factor. We call it VGF, or vascular endothelial growth factor. It will stimulate the blood supply into the cancer so that it will bring in the nutrition, bring in oxygen, and it will provide a pathway, the, the revenue for the cancer to spread to other organs. So another way to attack cancer is by blocking the blood formation of blood supply to the tumor. We have uh, about six uh, agents that's available in Thailand for stopping blood, uh, blood, blood supply to the cancer and will can stop cancer. <coughs> Next slide, please. This is an example. We have uh, one patient, a uh, 67 years old male, uh, uh, a smoker, and his DNA testing doesn't match any targeting agents available in the pharmaceutical store. So what we do, we, we give the patient chemo-targeted therapy. We have chemotherapy to destroy the cancer cell, and we have the antibody to block the blood supply to the tumor cell, we call bevacizumab. After that, the tumor shrink. We call it chemo-targeted treatment. This is another innovative treatment. Our next slide, please. Another very interesting issue is the lung cancer, which is the second most common cancer in a Thai male uh, may, many of them related to smoker, and some about 50% is related to something else. And this, ten, this patient is a woman, uh, a 62 years old woman, come to the hospital because of difficulty to breathe. And after they do the chest x-ray, uh, they can see something like this. They have water, or plural, we call plural effusion, that uh, a lung mass down here. This computer scan before treatment. The patient has far advanced cancer. Without any treatment, she will die within six months' time because of respiratory failure. So we get the tissue, we do a DNA analysis, we found that we have one target, we call HER1 mutation, sensitive mutation. We can treat the patient with oral uh, anti-HER2, anti-HER1 treatment. We call allotinib, one pill. It, it can uh, stop cancer growth because she has a very, very fine advanced cancer. So we add another product, we call it bevacizumab to block the cancer uh, growth by blocking the blood formation to the tumor. So we do use two target, dual target. We just dual target, we have a very dramatic response after treatment, three months after the treatment, without any chemotherapy at all. The cancer shrink and the patient feel better, the quality of life is better. This is what we call palliative. Uh, treatment by medications. There are many type of palliation that palliative treatment we can do. Non-chemo, we call it personalized cancer treatment. Next slide, please. One of the very difficulty to treat cancer is the cancer is so heterogeneous. It has many uh, strain in the body because one of the problem of cancer is it is genetic instab instable. It can mutate all the time, will keep changing. That's why when we start with a single cell, we call chrono evolution, it will keep changing, changing, changing the, the, the phenotype and it will be very different at, one, at a very advanced stage. So there are many targets to treat, very difficult to treat cancer because there are many targets. That's why doctors always use chemotherapy because regardless of the, the, the phenotype, the chemotherapy always works. But it has a limitation of normal tissue toxicity. Nobody like chemo. Even one of uh, Dr. Mano's friend who is, uh, on, who is an oncologist who get cancer, 
he refused chemo, even if he's a cancer doctor. So he knows that chemo is very toxic. Nobody likes it. So we have to know that cancer is very different. So every time you see cancer patient, you have to look to the cellular level, look to the genetic level. If you know all this information, it is much easier or you have a more chance to be successful to treat cancer. This topic, we talk only about the disease only. We are not talking about the patient. We talk only about the tumor only. Okay, next slide please. And, and the next session will have the video to demonstrate what, what I, 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 I tell you. This is a histo histology. Cancer is looks, it, I think sometimes cancer is very like a human being. You let, look at some of your friends. Sometimes they look good, they look honest, but they are not. Sometimes they look, uh, look like we are good men. <laughs> you can look at some of your friends or something like that. They look looks okay, look beautiful or handsome, but sometimes they are bad boy, some or bad girl. So cancer is very similar. But sometimes we, we can know we, because if you see something like this, you have something like this, it look very heterogeneity. This is a very aggressive tumor, but this looks good, very smooth, look very similar. This one looks okay, but this two look very really bad. Sometimes we can tell that cancer is bad from looking that at the histology or the, the appearance of the cancer, but some cancer, we don't. Some cancer, we don't. So we have to look inside the cancer, and one way to tell us is genetic information of that cancer cell, so that we can personalize, so we can targeting the right target. Next slide, please. Yeah, but it is a new concept because personalized cancer care. This is a new tr standard treatment. We have to personalize the treatment to make sure that the patient get the right drug to the right patient at the right time and at the right route. That is the best treatment available at this time. We call it five R strategies: right patient, right drug, right route, and uh, 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 right target so that we will we'll, we'll get the best benefit from the patient. So the scientists, they, they, they take out the cancer cell and they look for the genetic, look for the target and develop the drug exactly according to the target and they are successful. This is the way of drug development at this time. For example, lung cancer. We have, if we look at histology, we have adenocarcinoma, we have squamous, but if we look at the genetic, we can uh, differentiate the cancer cell. Even if it's lung cancer, we differentiate genetically into many types of cancer. For example, we have uh, HER1 uh, uh, mutated lung cancer, we have all lung cancer, we have uh, KRAS gene mutation, and we, we might be able to use the right drug to increase the survival, to improve the quality of life, and to decrease disease suffering by innovation. Uh, next slide. It's very important. For example, lung cancer, we have HER1. For breast cancer, we have to target HER2. Colorectal cancer, we target HER1. We have to find the target, and once we know the target, we use the right drug to stop the right target. If we, if we can stop the, the critical target, if, if the cancer is oncogene addicts, it will be killed by the drug without any side effect, a very minimum side effect to the normal tissues. Okay, next slide please. This is uh, one example, her, her family. We have many types, her one, her two, her three, her four. Her one is important in colorectal cancer and lung cancer, and even head and neck cancer. And her two is important for two diseases, uh, breast cancer and stomach cancer. Her three, her four, it does not relate it to any target yet, but it involved in drug resistance. So pre for example, previously, when we have breast HER2 positive breast cancer, we block HER2, her it can, uh, it can, it can uh, uh, stop cancer, but 50% of the cancer still recur because, they are, because HER2 will bind to HER3. So the scientists that develop the drug that will simultaneously block HER2 and HER3, it will eliminate the drug resistance. Uh, next slide, please. So this, this session we talk about a, a little bit more scientific. If there are any questions, you can ask uh, later after uh, the first session. If we can check the DNA, we might be able to tell who will respond, and we might even be able to know who will resist through the treatment so that we can use other treatment. 
this is example of what we have. We can check many type of genes, and we can find this is the genes that the cancer will resist to the treatment, and this is the genes that the, the cancer will, will sensitive to the treatment. So it's very important to identify the target of resistance or sensitivity and use the drug accordingly. That will deliver the best uh, maximum benefit to the patient. For example, for HER1, HER1 there are many positions. If you have a mutation of exon 19, if you use uh, uh, the drug that will block HER1, it has a better activity than chemo. So at, at this time, in the 20 to 21st century, this is the very first time that we can uh, demonstrate that targeting agent is better than chemotherapy. So don't worry about the chemo. Forget about the chemo if we have the target. We go for targeted treatment. Less side effect and more effective. This is the evidence base we show. That this is the mutation sensitive, these two. The most common mutation sensitive tumor in lung cancer, it use only one pill, so it can uh, control the tumor effectively. I've been treating one of uh, Dr. Mano's friend who has had lung cancer, and uh, he has mutation, L858R mutation. He's on uh, allotinib for over uh, one and a half years. We did the blast computer scan. The patient is still fine doing a regular meditation and uh, still having a good quality of life without any problem, despite he has, uh, he has an advanced lung cancer who will die six months without any treatment. But now he survived three times of his, uh, of his survi uh, survival already without any problem because of the personalized cancer treatment. Next slide. He show you something like this. The white color is the cancer cell uh, destroying the lung tissues. And the black color is a normal lung tissues. Before treatment and after treatment, December 2006 and uh, about three months later, the tumor shrink. Once the tumor shrink, there will be more space for the patient to breathe. And the patient uh, breathing capacity is getting better and the symptom is less, the quality of life is better with only one pill a day, one hour before meals. Uh, next slide. There are many companies that provide the testing. For example, the response diagnosis. They, they can provide all the tests. You just send the tumor to them and they'll do the test for you. There are many uh, services available. Next slide, please. This is something once one of the patient identified to be the out, out is oncogenes. We have a drug that will uh, stop the out from going. So take one pill in the morning, one in the evening. It will be out inhibitor. 5% of lung cancer is out oncogene activation. If you take the drug once in the morning, one in the evening, you will have something like this. Computer scan before treatment, this is the, the white uh, patches, which is a cancer. Almost uh, no, no normal lung tissue. The patient is dying at this time. He's dying because he cannot breathe. He, the oxygen in the blood is very low. After taking the out inhibitor, one in the morning, one in the evening, the lungs getting clear, we call it complete remission, everything disappears. Five percent of patient is out positive, use the pills one in the morning or the evening can stop the cancer growth and the cancer is back to normal. This is something like this. But finally, the cancer always resists. The, 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 that is the good news. But the bad news is that there's five whatever magic drug we're using because cancer is genetic instability because of its instability, it will keep mutation. And after mutation sensitive, it will be mutation to mutation uh, resistant and the tumor will go back again. So when you see the patient in your practice or as a, 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 a advocate or whatever, and uh, you have to check the tumor status, what tumor status she or he has, so that we might be able to adjust the program, the assistant program, according to the tumor status. We got different stage of cancer, different uh, 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 response to the treatment. Uh, the, the the management may be different. Palliative treatment is important, but it, it just depends. You you see a patient like this, the palliative technique may be different from what you see like this. And like this, maybe she can go jogging, you can go with them, go swimming, jogging, whatever. But for this state, it's a bit difficult. You have to do maybe some other activity to assist the patients. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, next slide. Similar slide. 
Another very difficult thing to treat is we have, we, we, sometimes we know and we can, we can uh, help the patient. Sometimes we know, but we cannot help the patient. This is an example. We know that many patients, they have some oncogene mutation. For example, KRAS, we know, we, we know that uh, we have, the patient has KRAS mutation, is there, but we don't have the drug. That's another problem at this time. We know that the problem is there, we know that that is important, cause of cancer progression, that if the mutation, that genes, it will kill, kill a cancer patient, but we don't have the drug yet. This is something we call unmet medical needs. It happens all the time in ontology. That's why so many alternative medicine take place into this space. But for KRAS mutation, the patient doesn't work, the doctor knows the mechanism of resistance, but we just cannot do anything because the drug is not yet available under development. So we have another path, we have a clinical trial. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Next slide. Now we'll go to the HER2. The HER2 is something like this. It's a core factor receptor. It's a target for breast cancer and stomach or gastric cancer. Next slide. This is the medication that we can use. We have many type of anti-HER2 treatment. Pratuzumab, pertuzumab. It looks like this. It will, it will, this is the molecule that it will be, will, and the scientist is very smart. They know that this, the target is HER2 in breast cancer. If they use the antibody to attack it, it will kill the cancer cell. If they want to make it better, how to enhance activity, they label with chemo. This is the antibody that will attack, they will uh, bind to HER2 specifically, and then they, they, they use the, anti the chemotherapy to bind to, into the antibody so that it looks like a military uh, war. You have uh, the, 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 the rocket that it can go all the way, follow the, 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 your enemies by, 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 by binding to something like a, a, a hot wave, whatever. They, they use it in the war, the, military, the new military war. We also use it as a cancer war. We have a targeting agent, uh, we buy it with a, a chemo, so the chemo will go directly to the target and deliver the chemo into the cells. This is not magic. It, it is under uh, uh, the, the, the licensing and under the, the, the approval of the Thai FDA. It's available in Thai, in the United States, uh, almost uh, uh, one year ago, one and a half year ago. Chemo targeted therapy in the same molecule. The molecule will buy the HER2 specifically only for cancer cells because the normal cell they don't have it, and it, it will deliver the chemo, the m directly into the cancer cells. Next slide. In order to achieve the best treatment at this time, we have to look for the target. This is some of the service available. You can test and then try to identify the drug to treat the patient. Uh, next slide. Okay, next slide. This is done deep in detail. Next slide, please. Okay, immunotherapy. This is very important. It is very important. Uh, last hour, you do meditation. Do you know that meditation can increase or can enhance the immunity? There's a, 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 a knowledge, we call it psycho neuro immuno ontology you can, you can simulate your immune system by the behavior therapy and my body treatment. That is something that is really uh, real, is real in the real world. No side effect, uh, doesn't cause anything, it's very good. The concept is how can you uh, increase your immunity. Uh, okay, let's know what, what the immu Im immunity is. Uh, next slide, please. In the cancer cell, if you, take, if you look at the cancer cell in the slide like that, uh, the jet X-ray, you see the cancer cell, the white color. There's many cells in the body. There are cancer cells, there are connected tissue cells, there are immune system, there are lymph lymphatic system, there are blood supply, and what I would like to focus here is the immune cell. This is all the immune cells that go to the cancer cell. It will freeze, it will stop the cancer cell. It's a fighting between the good and the bad. The bad cancer and the good is the immunity. That it happens in every cancer patient, and even in your body. Maybe somebody here, they have got some sort of infection, get flu or get a common cold. They, they, they can, uh, if once you want your immunity, win, you will not get sickness. If you 
lose the wall, you will get sickness. This is something happening in cancer cell all the time. When you go to see the patient in a palliative setting, how can you enhance the immune system of the patient? Uh, next slide, please. First, you have to know the immune system first. One of the immune system is the antibody. The antibody is a protein that produced by the immune cell to destroy the protein specific to that disease. This is the picture of the immunity of the antibody. Uh, next slide, please. The antibody can treat many types of cancer. This is the list of the cancer being treated. We have bevacizumab can treat six types of cancer. So this is something we call immunotherapy. We have cetuzumab will treat two to four types of cancer. Panitumumab can treat uh, uh, colorectal cancer. Pertuzumab treat breast cancer. Rituzumab treat, treat lymphoma or cancer of the lymph node. Tratuzumab can treat breast cancer and stomach cancer. This is the antibody. The antibody is something that the, the human body produced by itself to get rid of infection of cancer. The scientists can do mo uh, molecular cloning, so can do genetic engineering to modify the antibody to use it in clinical to treat cancer. This is uh, uh, a half a dozen of antibodies can be used to treat cancer. Uh, next slide. So one of the immune systems is antibody. And the second system is the cell, the cellular system. This, the cell usually produced in the bone, it produced in the thymus gland, it produced in the liver. It will help you. Even for yourself, you can use this technique to help yourself, but you have to know your immunity first. If you know your immunity, then you can spread this knowledge that should help your patients. Next slide, please. This is the, the morphology, the picture of your cell. Everybody in this room has the same cell. You have the already cell. Um, it, but it depends how many you have or how, how, what, is, what is the function of the cell. Next slide, please. All these things can be tests can be used. So start with the most important cell. The most important immune, immune cell to fight against cancer is, looks like this. Looks like this, this one. We call it natural killer cells. Or uh, if we do the blood, if you order the blood test, we have CD16 or CD56. We have to check the quantity and quality. We have to check the number of the cell. We have to check the function, how, how is the function into percentage. We have to check both. Because sometimes the number is normal, but the function is less. This is the most important cell that will kill cancer cell. It will kill cancer cell regardless of the antibody. Whenever we see the, the abnormal cell, it will kill the cancer directly. If the NK cell in, in this room, if your NK cell is less, you are in trouble. You can get infection easily. If you have mutation of the cell in your body, you can get cancer easily. You must have a good natural killer cell number and function. Our next slide, please. The second cell is a dendritic cell. Anybody ever watch the movie Sniper? Sniper. Sniper is a, 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 mark, a markman chip in, in a shooting rifle. So when they want to shoot somebody, they need two team men. Firstly, they need to get the shooter, and the second, they need to get another person to watch and to identify the target. The dendritic cell is the, the watcher, the one who watched the target, and identify the right target, and hit the target. This is dendritic cell. It's very important because it will tell your body to know, is it cancer or is it not cancer? The cancer is a genius cell. It sometimes it can prevent the, the, the body from, from, from knowing that it is a bad cell by doing so many things. Even they can produce some protein, a Mach 1 protein to block, to block the surface so that we don't, we don't know what it is. It's similar to a movie. Anybody ever watch the, the movie Battleship? The Battleship is an alien who try to come to, to the world and we want to overcome the world and take it to colonies. So what they do, they have a technology to produce some of the signals so that they will hit them their airship so that nobody knows uh, where it is. So the new technology cannot identify the alien uh, 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 battleship. The way to do that, it go to the Missouri uh, uh, ship, which is a very old Asian uh, manually operated ship. And for, by that, they can identify and they try to hit the target first because they, they can do it manually. Once the, the shielding uh, 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 protection wave have been uh, damaged, then the new technology, new, new, the high-tech uh, uh, battleship can go ahead and destroy the alien. That's similar to what they try to do in the scientific to treat the cancer patient. Try to identify the target, try to use something like this to identify 
the cancer cell in the body. After that, this one will go there and ask somebody to shoot the, the cancer cell directly, uh, specifically. Once the cancer cell open and, and then unmask themselves, then it's easy for other cells to get rid of the cancer cell. Watch the battleship, you will know the dendritic cell. Watch the spiral movie, and you will enlighten. You will you will know what's going on. Okay. Okay. Next slide. This is important because the dendritic cell is a standard treatment for cancer in the past three years already. We call it cancer vaccine. It's approved by the USAID and EU already. Dendritic, dendritic cell based uh, uh, vaccine, cancer vaccine. The thirdly, this is what we call cytotoxic T cell or CDA. It's very important because it will destroy the cancer cell by in collaboration with the dendritic cell and the antibody. So we call it ADCC, antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. It will use the dendritic cell with the antibody and this cell together to destroy the cancer cell. If you want to be free from cancer, you must have an intact, a good immunity, you must have a good NK cell, you must have good uh, dendritic cell uh, function properly in enough number, and you must have a good uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte or CD8. So with whatever you help the patient, if you want to make sure the patient has good immunity, sometimes we can check it, or maybe sometimes we can use a clinical assessment to make sure that the patient uh, has been having a uh, good, uh, proper uh, nutrition, uh, and, uh, and, and his body and mind is perfect, and you can do meditation. All these things can be done by the, by the non-medical treatment. You don't need medication. You can do so many things like a mind-body therapy, music therapy, so many things to do. Uh, next slide, please. This is how we do vaccine for prostate cancer. We call it Provence. It's a very expensive vaccine approved by USFDA three and a half years ago. They bring out the dendritic cell and they will pulse with the antigen specific to the cancer, and they, they, they multiply the cells, inject it back to the body, it's very expensive. I think it's a three injection cost about three, four million baht already, very expensive. It's available in US, it can get reimbursement in US, but in Thailand, we don't have it yet. Probably uh, a pro -range. This is the mechanism that, that use this cell to, to treat the prostate cancer, and it can increase survival of advanced breast uh, metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. We call it cancer vaccine, therapeutic cancer vaccine. Uh, next slide, please. Ten years ago, there are so many uh, uh, interesting projects. One of the largest uh, 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 scientific projects available in the world. Do you know what is the largest and most expensive uh, scientific research project in the world? Anybody who know? The most expensive, comprehensive, and the largest uh, research ever done in this world. Genome project. Genome. Human genome project. Very good. Uh, it, it accomplished in 2003. <laughs> it took them only seven years to accomplish that. After 2003, when that uh, uh, mega project finished, they start to, to do the cancer genome project. From 2003 to 2014, visited 10 years ago, they get the mapping of the cancer, they get over 90% of the genetic uh, information already. It looks like this because it's third course, this is all the information and there, and that they can, the clinical ap application is the next step. What I would like to tell you today is that when they look for the, this complicated third course, for the cancer that is very difficult to treat or they don't have a very good targeted treatment, they have a very, very a, a different mutation. There's so many mutations. So in other words, the patient has so many mutations, there's so many targets, so that we cannot uh, develop only one drug to treat the cancer. So if the patient who has so many mutations and many targets to treat, it's very difficult to use only one drug. And if you use too many drugs, it will be too expensive, it will be too toxic. What is the best way to treat patient with so many mutations? Anybody know? Immunotherapy. Because the immunotherapy will kill cancer cells regardless of genetic. They don't care. As long as you are cancer, you're a bad boy, they will kill. So immunotherapy is a new hope for the, for the human being to treat the difficult uh, cancer that has many genetic damage. Uh, next slide, please. 
This is how to do gene chip assay, try to identify the mutation. There's a commercially available. This is uh, approximately the, the chip that you use for the mobile phone chip, something like that. Looks like they can identify a thousand of genes at one time. We call it microarray. The technology is available. We have one machine in the Jolalongkorn University. Ramatibiti has it. Sirata has it. But they haven't yet applied for service yet. They can use a very small chip that identify the tumor DNA, put into the chip, analyze by computer of all this uh, uh, signal information so we know uh, what, what, what the cancer has, uh, what genetic change it, 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 it exists in, the, in that particular patient. Uh, next slide. This is the second approved uh, cancer vaccine in the world. We call it uh, epilimumab. This, this is a very uh, smart idea. So what they do is that we, one of the cancers that is very difficult to treat is malignant melanoma. It's a very, very common cancer for the white or the Caucasian because they don't have a very good protection against the UV light. You expose too much to the sunlight, you will have melanoma. It's a deadly disease. It has a lot of mutations, very difficult to treat. They identify one for, uh, 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 mutation site, V600E. We can use the drug to treat. But the rest of them, they don't. So once they don't, what they do, they do the, do the cancer immunotherapy. They, what they try to do is a concept, it's easy concept for waking the, t the, the immune system. The, the, the cancer cells are very smart. They produce some protein uh, that it will, it will block, block the, the, the tube, the T cell, so that the T cell will be sleeping because of uh, this blockage, put cell to sleep. The cancer cell will activate, uh, will activate the, 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 the immune cell, the CD8 cell, by shut down the signal, so the cell will, will not recognize the cancer cell. So scientists, what they try to do is they produce the antibody to block, to activate the T cell, so that it will wake the T cell up so that it can kill cancer. Very simple, very, Easy idea, but it really works, and it has been approved for the treatment of malignant melanoma who doesn't have any V600E target. We call epilimumab. Wake up the cancer cell by activate here. Once you, when you check here, you block it, it by doing this thing, activate the tumor cell, the, the immune system, the CD8. Without this, the cancer cell will produce another protein to block to put the T cell to sleep. This something exists in the melanoma patients. Uh, next slide, please. Another interesting thing. Anybody has ever been to Cuba? Cuba is a communist country. They produce a very good uh, 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 cigar from Havana. Cigar has 10 times carcinogenic agent than uh, a cigarette to cause lung cancer. That's why in, in, in Cuba there are so many lung cancer because they had cheap cigar to, to smoke. And this is Dr. Gonzalez. She spent her whole life to develop one type of vaccine, again, HER1. And remember, HER1 is a target for uh, treating lung cancer. She made a vaccine against HER1. And the vaccine is called Simuvax. And this is a vaccine looks like this. And this has been approved by the Cuba uh, uh, FDA uh, many years ago. Lung cancer vaccine is very, act, uh, very active now. Many companies are developing the vaccine, but the one that has been approved in Cuba is Simovac, so like this. Vaccine is to stimulate the, tube, the immune system to specifically uh, stop or to destroy the HER1 uh, genes in the cancer cell. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, uh, in order to treat the cancer cell, uh, you must have to identify the target. You have to treat the patient, the right patient, at the right time and uh, with the right drug. Targeting treatment by knowing the mechanism of disease and you have to set the balance between the immune system, the cancer, the patient, everything has to be checked into balance. If we check into balance, that will be uh, provide the ben maximum benefit. Uh, so, so called holistic uh, medicine is very important. And uh, the immune system has to be very, very effective. And body, my body has to be, uh, has to be one. It's important, my body has to be one. If you have a, a, a good body, but you have a, a really weak mind, it, the treatment will never be good enough. Immune system is an explanation for that. And the right nutrition and 
there is no second chance winner in cancer. That's another very important thing. You have only one chance to beat cancer. There's no second chance winner. If you lose, the patient's uh, life is will be sacrificed for for uh, the loser. Next slide, please. The beating cancer core value today for the first session. Uh, we call it strong. We have to be strong. The the S is you have, it, you, you have to be strong. Okay. Uh, you must have a strong teamwork, operation, excellence, innovative, as I discussed to you, and good heart and good brain. A doctor with good, good, good brain and good heart is a good doctor, like Dr. Mano. If you have a, if you have, if you have a doctor who has a bad, if you have a doctor with a bad heart and a good brain, it's okay. Leave, leave him alone. If you have a doctor with a good brain and a good heart, that is something you have to work with. I think in this room it's Dr. Mano. And lastly, life is beautiful. Don't forget the strong and life will be beautiful. So this is the first, the first session, it's just theory, but after that we have the video to, to to, to, to go along with you so that uh, you might be able to keep up with the subject because uh, oncology is one of the most uh, complicated subjects now because the concept of treatment change every six months after the cancer genome project. Okay, so uh, this time we're gonna change the topic a little bit. We're gonna be changed to uh, edutainment. So we will present you with some of the video and then we can discuss after each video how much you uh, uh, understand about the uh, cancer treatment. So we'll go. We need to make a decision. I just want to remind you of a couple of things first. HER2 is the most promising drug this company has ever seen. I stood right here and I did something that has never been done before. I shrank a cancer tumor with six drops of our drug. No poison, no chemo, just the antibody. Well, it's a big leap from shrinking a tumor in a dish to Curing cancer, doctor. This isn't a cure. It's a treatment to shrink cancer tumors and make them inactive, which is better than chemo and radiation because it has no side effects. I wish we could know without an official study that the drug would work, but if we test it and have a bad result, it'll be the interferon disaster all over again. It's the only cancer drug we ever developed and it almost ruined us. You developed that based on no hard evidence. I have shown you real data. Real data that HER2 can work. We can't base our decision just on the science. We have a responsibility to the company. And spending millions on HER2 means we aren't spending it on more promising drugs. When you put all the pieces together, the potential downside is just too severe. Well, clearly, you don't have anyone with cancer in your life. How lucky for you. Well, I do. I speak to cancer patients and their families every day, and I hope for their sake that one day there's a better treatment out there than the current slash and burn that exists at the moment. When I was a kid, I watched a doctor save my father's life, and I knew in that moment that I wanted to do what he did, because when you save someone's life, you're not just saving them, you're saving everyone around them. And now when I look into a woman's eyes and tell her that her cancer is terminal, and she tells me, what are the treatments are available? And I tell her, we don't have any. I know that we do. But you don't know her two will work. I do know. I know. Don't throw this chance away. Maybe you've been sitting behind a desk for too long. Maybe I've been on the front lines longer than I should have, but for God's sake, don't forget who we are. We're not businessmen. We're doctors. Okay, drug development is very difficult. You can see here. This is the real story. It happened in UCLA uh, back in 1990, something like that. And this doctor is Dr. Dennis Slaman. He's uh, Living Proof. This is the name of the movie, Living Proof. But uh, this is based on a real story. How they try to make the drug available to the patient. They discuss with the 
authority discuss with the researcher, with the company, try to bring the drug into real, uh, real life practice, do it research. Not easy at all. And we can learn many things from here. So in order to treat the patient who does not have any effective treatment like what we see in this, this uh, movie, the patient with breast cancer, her two positive, we know the bad cancer, we have no option at that time, and the patient uh, needs something, and he's, he regret to tell, to tell the patient that we, have, we cannot do anything. If you were Dr. Dennis Slamon, how would you answer your patient? If you said, uh, we need to do something to help my, 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 my wife or my, uh, my father, my mother. If you uh, go to a house uh, with a patient, the patient asks you, like what they asked Dr. Dennis Slamon, how would you answer them? Will you answer uh, 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 them like what Dr. Slamon, Dennis Slamon answered, or would you have a, uh, a other answer? Who would like to answer this question? The patient who has advanced disease, the patient is dying, uh, uh, she or he needs something and you are taking care of the patient uh, what would you tell them I just want to ask you uh, what would you do before you go to the real uh, 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 patient care how would you answer would you answer like Dr. Nanny Salmon and say honestly we have nothing let's die in peace something like that so what would you answer them Anybody would, any volunteer would you like to answer this question? Okay, go ahead, you are very brave. Okay, not easy. Maybe second chance for use anti her too. If you, if you want to test, because the, 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 the last movie, he, he want to, to use treatment for her too, and no one block, and and everybody block him, and so it's the last choice for people who, 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 who will pass away. Any anything used used to her, your food to her. I think he maybe present his uh, his his drug. There's no right or wrong uh, uh, of this question, but this is a very important question that you will uh, face when you go to see the patient. Uh, uh, I just want to tell you what I, what I do if I, if I face a patient or come across a patient who, who asks me this question. Firstly, if you look at your shirt, life is beautiful, right? Okay? And where there is life, there is hope. You have to provide the patient with hope. If she or he has a hope, they can die peacefully. If they're hopeless, very depressive. You need to make sure that the patient has hope. For example, meditation is a way to go, or go to a, or maybe try to enroll into a clinical study. We have a phase one study for patients who refractory to anything, they can be enrolled to the study. Important, life is beautiful. Where there is life, there is hope. And hope is the thing that will keep the patient ongoing and they can die peacefully. If the answer is that we can do nothing, it's, it's, it's very honest, but um, not many patients can accept it. That's why many patients they go to alternative medicine, herbal medicine, because they need something. Even the placebo effect, it gives them hope. It's not e efficacy because we don't know, we don't have evidence to support, but it gives them hope. You have to make sure that uh, the patient is not hopeless. Otherwise, uh, Instead of helping the patient, you can make the patient more depressive. But honesty is the best policy. If you're not honest, the, the, doc, the patient will not uh, trust you anymore. So this is how you have to try to choose the way to approach the patient. It's part of the art of ontology. But it's very difficult. Uh, let me tell you what's really going on. Dr. Nancy Salamon believes that antibody uh, really works and nobody gives them budget. They, he, do, he did the first study by his own money, from his own pocket, because they want to save the patient's life, inspired by uh, his father's history in the past. So he used his own money to do research and the very first time to save the life of the patient. This is another thing that, that uh, uh, taught us that you want to uh, help the patient, you have to have a very 
good heart. Otherwise, it's well not easy. Attitude and 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 a good heart it will overcome everything. And the con the, the concept is the the key concept is hope. Okay, next slide, please. Bad news, or you would have told me on the phone. Well, actually, the news is good. Your response to the Herceptin is more successful than I ever thought possible. It not only stopped your tumor from growing, Barbara, it made it disappear. My tumor's gone. Your tumor's gone. Now, you still have cancer, but this is an exceptional result. Amazing, even. nice to get some good news for a change. Yeah. I feel good. Please don't tell me I'm not. You're cancer free. What? There's not one sign of cancer in your body. None. How? Part of it's the receptum, the rest. I don't know. But the cancer's still there. It, 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 it only takes one cell. You're cancer free. I read the results myself and I made them retest. Cancer free. Cancer free. Free of cancer! <laughs> cancer free! <laughs> oh, I wanted to hear what those words were. I don't know what to do. What do I do? Well, to be honest, all of the other women responded like I thought they would. They improved, but your cancer is gone completely. So, as for what I would do, just be grateful. And by the way, you don't have to come here anymore. <laughs> Except to say hello. Uh, target the treatment that uh, can uh, shrink the tumor, making the tumor disappear. We call it complete remission. Uh, anybody can uh, explain why the patient get a complete remission or uh, the tumor uh, disappear. The patient is free from cancer by the trastuzumab or Herceptin. If you combine the knowledge from my uh, uh, first a lecture plus the, the activity that you see in this movie, how can you explain the, the patient achieving a cancer-free status? Anybody want to answer? Okay. Targeted approach, so very, very specific. And I, I think the doctor's contribution is also that it was very po positive and hopeful. So I think these two things combined together. Right. Firstly, we need a drugable target. The druggable target is uh, HER2. And the druggable target has to have a char characteristic of oncogene ad uh, addiction. I talked to Dr. Mano outside about the nicotine addiction. We can use nicotine to, in the palliative setting, making the patient feel a euphoria. In cancer, they have a similar situation. About 15 to 20% of breast cancer with HER2 positive breast cancer they are oncogene addiction. Without the oncogene, they will die. So if you can block the HER2, which is the oncogene that critical for the cancer survival, the patient will, can, can, can be, so, can be uh, safe from cancer. And there are many uh, treatments that's available to target HER2 but the tratuzumab or Herceptin is the best. It's based on the second uh, information. The first information is it attacked the right target, so-called the oncogene addiction. Once we block it, the cancer cell die. And the second very important uh, uh, it, uh, uh, reason is it is immunogenic. It will make the cancer uh, be recognized by the immune cells. 
and the immune cell that will destroy the HER2 positive breast cancer that bind to the trastuzumab by uh, we call it antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Once it binds to the bind to the target, then the immune cell will know exactly where the cancer is and it will attack the cancer cell aggressively and rapidly and will make the patient cancer free. So you can see that everything, whatever it is, we need the patient factor. We need the intact immunity. Even at a very palliative uh, setting, if the patient has a good immune system, they will not get infection, they will uh, live better. This is a patient factor that we have to be aware of because we are not dealing only with the tumor, but we have to deal with the patient as well. So if you have two uh, factors together in a comprehensive holistic approach, the, you can provide what we call to, live, to make the patient live better. Okay, can, uh, any question for this? I just wonder the, 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 the medicine that Dr. Salomon used, uh, research is still using nowadays and is still working? The, the medication, th this is such the model that I show you. This is the very first targeted treatment available uh, in, in, in the world uh, about uh, 15 years ago called Tratusumab. It will block the HER1 oncogene and uh, the HER2 oncogene, sorry, the HER2 oncogene is available in Thailand over 10 years already. So this is a uh, life-saving drug, but you must know how to use it. It's available 20, 20 years and it's, it's, it is good, but not good enough because even in the adjuvant setting, the patient with HER2 positive breast cancer, we have to use trastuzumab for one year to prevent the cancer from coming back. 50, 30 to 50 percent of the patient with breast cancer, even they use trastuzumab, still resist to the treatment. And 50 percent of the patient who has a recurrent cancer after using trastuzumab, 50 percent will die within three years. So the drug is good, but not good enough. So at this time, they have a second generation of drug. They use trastuzumab and buy to chemotherapy called MTANC. So that, that is a second generation we call magic bullets. If the target's still there, it resists to the antibody, they can use the antibody attached or I have a linker to the chemo called MTANC. And the good news is the TDM1 or the, the chemotherapy by, uh, uh, binding tratusumab is under the approval by the Thai FDA. So we move to the second generation. Okay, if no more questions, we have more video to, to see. This will elucidate the concept that I, I talked to you on my first lecture. Perceptive a multimodal approach targeting HER2-positive breast cancer. For some women, effective treatment of breast cancer can start deep at the root of the disease. Some of the most aggressive breast cancers are driven by a transmembrane receptor protein known as HER2, a member of the HER family of receptor tyrosine kinases. Roughly 20,000 HER2 receptors are typically expressed on the surface of healthy breast cells. In approximately 25% of primary breast cancers, the HER2 protein is overexpressed, resulting in tumor cells with as many as 2 million receptors present on the surface of each cell. These cancers are called HER2 positive. The effect of HER2 overexpression is a tremendous increase in receptor-mediated intracellular signaling, directing the cell to proliferate uncontrollably. For this reason, HER2-driven disease results in an aggressive form of breast cancer, which, if left untreated, can progress rapidly. Herceptin is a monoclonal antibody specifically designed to target the HER2 receptor. With an extended half-life that allows for constant exposure to tumor cells, based on preclinical studies, Herceptin delivers continuous inhibition of HER2 activity by working on both the extracellular and intracellular domains of the receptor. Herceptin is the only approved therapy designed to bind to HER2-positive tumor cells extracellularly and flag them for destruction by the immune system.
In addition, bound Herceptin prevents HER2 receptor activity by blocking intracellular HER2 signaling and ultimately inhibiting cell proliferation. Along with its direct effects on the HER2 receptor, based on preclinical studies, Herceptin enhanced the effects of chemotherapy, leading to cell stasis and death. With several distinct mechanisms, Herceptin works both extracellularly and intracellularly to deliver a multimodal attack against cells overexpressing the HER2 receptor, a receptor linked to one of the most aggressive forms of breast cancer. There are many important issues for cancer treatment. Firstly, you must identify the druggable target. Secondly, that list must be the critical target that the treatment is effective. Thirdly, you have to use the right drug for the right patient. And fourthly, if you combine with a pre-existing treatment like chemotherapy, that will enhance activity of the drug. For example, if you use tratuzumab or Herceptin alone, the response to shrink the tumor is 15%. But if you plus chemo, it will be double. The response will be up to 30 or maybe more percentage of, of the of, of treatment. So when you treat cancer patient, firstly, when the patient is very advanced, you have to shrink the tumor as much as possible. Because if you leave the tumor ongoing, the patient will die because of the high tumor burden uh, destroy the vital organs function. If you can shrink the tumor, you can bring the survival curve for the patient to, to lower and the patient can live uh, longer and better. And the combination of the right treatment, that is the way to go for the treatment of uh, cancer patients. The, the, the TV program of, from TV, Thai PBS channel about the one, one man have the um, leukemia, uh, CA in white blood cell, and he get the treatment of uh, chemo treatment, but it not good getting better. And after that, the, the, the doctors have, uh, has, has asked the family to use the stem cell from, from the family. Um, finally, uh, her elder sister, his elder sister, uh, matching for to this process. Um, af after, after both of them do the stem cell, I, I, I couldn't understand about the medical uh, treatment, but before, um, this, this guy had the blood O type, and, and uh, his elder sister had blood A type. After the stem cell done and the, the man get better on another day and on his body, um, on his blood type changed to blood A and, and, his, um, and both of them have the same character immediately. They think together, they do something together. So I wonder why uh, the blood type can change and I could understand about DNA can, can change from the blood. This is my, my question. Uh, answer your question. Uh, the blood group, they are major blood group and minor blood group. For the patient who has O positive, they, their blood can be used by the patient who has blood group A or B. But for themselves, they have to use O only. They call it uh, compatibility. Otherwise, you will have antibody reaction problem. So if, if, if the patient has blood group O, then uh, they, they, they change it to blood group A, right? But group A, then well, what, what they do is they they use the stem, the, the bone marrow stem cell or peripheral blood stem cell. And the, the reason they have to use stem cell is because when the patient, when a cancer patient resists to the chemo, one of the treatment is use super chemo, a very high dose chemo, kill all the, all the blood cells. And after the, all the blood cell has been killed, including the, the, the blood stem cell, they have to repress with another type of stem cell so that the patient can survive. This is, we call it supra or high dose or chemotherapy. That will has to be followed by stem cell transplantation, either for the, from the bone marrow or from the peripheral blood. The source of the stem cell can be from the patient themselves 
uh, from, from the relatives of who, who, who is uh, co- uh, HLA matching. For example, they, they have a compatible uh, uh, stem cell that match the patient. So firstly, what they do when the patient receives the treatment, the treatment they keep high dose chemo, why up, why out all the blood cells in the body, including the cancer cells? Because when the cancer cell resists to the standard chemo, when they use high dose or super dose of chemo, it can get rid of all the tumor cells. At the same time, it will kill the normal cells too. And then they have to replace with the stem cell so that the stem cell can continue to proliferate and to give a, a mature blood cell, which is important for the patient's uh, survival. Stem cell, there are, there are two types of stem cell. The patient stem cell, uh, or the, 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 the normal stem cell, and the cancer stem cell. The cancer stem cell is a final frontier that we cannot beat because sometimes the patient had a recurrent tumor, the, the cancer regrowth, and that comes from the cancer stem cell. We don't have any effective treatment for cancer stem cell yet. It's under uh, development. That is the last frontier that we, we don't know how to deal with the cancer stem cell. It can come back in any cancer patients, many, even many years after the treatment. And thirdly, is the stem cell for cosmetic, anti-aging. So it's a very uh, underground uh, business in Thailand and, and all over the world. When people are getting older, they get money, they don't want to die, they want to live young forever. So they believe that if they get stem cell replacement, that will replace the, the aging cells, which is under clinical experiment, it is not approved yet. And lastly, people try to use stem cell in cancer patients. For example, patients have multiple liver met- uh, metastasis, the, the liver is almost failed. They try to inject the stem cell by, by the belief that the stem cell maybe go to the liver and regenerate into the normal liver cells. And that also a clinical experiment also. The indication for uh, stem cell treatment in cancer patients, usually in leukemia, leukemia patients who receive high dose chemotherapy and then need to get a, a stem cell transplantation. That's the only indication approved by the uh, Food and Drug Administration. The rest of them are not. So that's a standard treatment. And what type can change? Uh, normally, he, he, uh, the, the man raised up for Batai group, and now the type change to A, and both of them have the same character. Yes, b- 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 because when they transplant the, stem, the bone marrow stem cell, the bone marrow stem cell control, uh, 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 contain of the red blood, red blood cell stem cell as well. And the red blood cell stem cell is from the, the, re- the, 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 the donor. So that's why it's at A, because it's from the owner. Because the patient own a uh, blood a stem cell has already been it wiped out by chemo. Oh. That's why it, it changed to A. I and and I, I wonder why when we, when we transplant from this stem cell and blood, I have this from blood, and then they think they do the same thing. I, I, I wonder when they, they separate, they don't live together, but they do the same thing and they go to the same place on the same time. <laughs> No, this is the real thing, not, not, not the movie. This is the real person, it's all of time. Yeah, because it inject the, the stem cell, which is a, 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 a blood group A, that's why when it regenerates into mature cells, still is A, because it produced from the, the donor a stem cell. And, and the man have the manners look like elder sister. Oh, that, 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 that probably that's not related to stem cell. <laughs> Unless the stem cell can go to the brain and changing the brain, I don't know. That's, that's beyond my, my, my knowledge. If they can change their behavior, that's very strange. Uh, no, uh, because he, he, um, he said he's, he still like women, but the character he changed before he, he is a sport man, and now he changed to like a female, same as his elder sister, because after the same cell um, process. Maybe because of the effect of the treatment, it, it makes him less active because the chemo is very toxic. Oh. Maybe, maybe that's why he, he, he can no longer be a sportman anymore after the super chemo. 
not easy. It really damages to the body. Okay, thank you. I believe that cancer happens among the richest, but nowadays it seems that it's also widespread among the poor. Um, I would like to ask you a, a question with respect. Uh, are you aware that whether or not there is any research among Thai physicians to work with the herbal medicine to cure cancer rather than importing expensive medicine from overseas? I expect you are from a rich family. That's why I don't know because I, uh, according to your question, does the there a study by the World Health Organization and the conclusion of the study from the WHO is that poverty is a prognostic factor. In other words, if you're poor, you get cancer, you die sooner. If you're rich, you get cancer, you do you will have a long uh, longevity, or you uh, because you get access to a, a very good drug. But, and so the, the social status, it can, it can be a prognostic factor. You got money, you got cancer, you can live longer. If you don't have money, you got cancer, you, get the, the, you cannot get reimbursement, or you, have, you have financial constraint. You cannot access to the active drug to increase your survival, that's a problem. The lifestyle, actually, if you get cancer, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily, you're rich and then you get more cancer, or you're poor, you get cancer. Because the etiology of cancer is very different. For example, if you smoke, it doesn't matter if you're a rich man or you're a poor man, you, you, you smoke, you will get lung cancer and another a dozen types of cancer. And if you are, if you are a rich man, you, you, you like a, a foreign a food, like you take a lot of steak, a foreign style, I, 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 I call it lifestyle of death, which, is, which it will cause so many types of cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, renal cancer. That is a Western uh, diet. It really causes a lot of problems. The, the original or authentic Thai uh, food, it really uh, can prevent many types of cancer. I think maybe you can learn some from Dr. Jongkin. So social status is important, but it's not important in terms of the, 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 the cancer uh, uh, incident, but it related to the treatment more because we have many effective treatment. But the lifestyle is it's very important. 85% is the lifestyle and environmental factor causing cancer. But there are some cancer that we see more in the poor than in the, in, in the rich, like cervical cancer. You see more in the prostate or the poor because you know that it spread through the a human papilloma virus, for example. And hepatitis B or C, which is a common cause of liver cancer all over the world, including Thailand. Social status is not important because it, it's infection related, for example. But if you, are, if you are a rich man, what type of cancer will you get? Firstly, Prostate, colorectal cancer. Secondly, prostate cancer. Thirdly, uh, lung cancer, not necessary. It's not social status related. Breast cancer, because breast cancer is related to diet and environmental factor. And even renal cancer. And if you're rich plus obesity, you have rich, yeah, you're a fat man, a fat woman. Then you, will, you will experience about six or seven types of cancer, including uterine cancer. So social status is not the only factor. There are many uh, factors integrated to uh, cause cancer. Uh, if, for example, if, if you're white, regardless of you are, you are rich or you are poor, you go to the, to the sunlight, you expose to too much sunlight, you will get skin cancer. If you are a black man, you go to the sun, then it doesn't affect you at all. So many uh, etiology, many factors. Social status can contribute to some type of cancer, but, but not everything. It related to the lifestyle, but not the money. Yes, uh, my question is regarding whether or not Thai physicians have get together and try to work with herbal medicine, because we have a lot of herbs in Thailand, and and uh, and perhaps we could cure cancer with our own herbs. We 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 cannot get cure cancer with any herbs at all, according to my. To, to my knowledge, because I have never seen any herbal medicine can cure cancer unless you have to purify the drug and you have to, uh, to, to, have to uh, 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 synthesize the drug and do it the clinical study, make sure that you get enough drug at the therapeutic level before you can use it. By taking uh, uh, herbal medicine, the, the, the level of the drug in the blood may not be enough to treat cancer. But for cancer prevention, it's possible. Actually, 
this issue has been brought to the government and, the, and many universities in Thailand over 40, 50 years already. But uh, because of the limited resource in Thailand, we are, not, we are moving very slow. Mahidon University published a textbook like this, and they, they studied many types of cancer, and they found that the in vitro activity of the, the Thai herbal medicine, this seems to be the strongest one, is cucumin, kamin chan. And the cucumin should come from Suratani province that has the highest uh, cancer activity. Why? They don't know. But to, in order to use what type of the active ingredient in cucumin to use a clinical uh, uh, study, they, don't, they cannot uh, identify most of the active ingredient yet. So, so it's, it's, it's not easy because of the, the herbal medicine, there are many uh, uh, contents in the herbal medicine. But 20% of the plants, they extract into chemotherapy already. And some of them can cure cancer. So it's still a long, long way to go. After the revolution, maybe things may get better. I don't know. OK, go ahead. Uh, well, we, why he survived? And that's why he has an aggressive tumor. Firstly, uh, Dr. Mano, he told me that uh, there's a textbook about spontaneous regression of cancer written by John Hopkins Hospital long time ago. And uh, the cancer can be shrinked by, possibly by I I immunity. And secondly, uh, the cancer is a check, check balance between immunity and the cancer. Once your immunity beat cancer, the cancer can be suppressed. Whenever the cancer growing mutation until it can beat your immunity, then the cancer grows and destroys the, the vital organs and then you have become symptomatic. Because your body can fight against cancer by yourself. It can repair the DNA. So there are many mysteries that we, 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 we don't know in the patients. But sometimes the patient can stabilize disease for a long time. That's why they have aggressive tumor. And the cancer stem cell, another issue, it can come back at any time. And nothing can cure the cancer stem cell. No chemo, no targeted treatment. I think if time is up, do we have a question for, do we have another question? But Dr. Manoj, it's a break. So should we stop 12 o'clock? Should we answer a, bit, a couple of questions? May I ask you the question, uh, what is the key difference between the pul pulmonary cancer uh, versus uh, the tuberculosis? And what is the method of uh, therapy? And both of these diseases can be recovered absolutely or not? Thank you. The lung cancer and the pulmonary tuberculosis? Yeah, or okay. TB. Yeah. Uh, I, I did the study many years ago. 10% of the patients in the Julangkorn University were misdiagnosed as tuberculosis because tuberculosis is very common in Thailand. And sometimes there's some scars, some lesions that believe it's tuberculosis and mistreatment for many months until the, uh, the tumor progress happens all the time. And after the patient having scar and the scar is, uh, is a hallmark of cancer, the chronic inflammation activate many uh, growth factor. And once it get, it, it get activation by the cancer causing uh, agent, then it can change to cancer, we call scar tumor. The treatment exactly the same like uh, 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 other etiology. Most of them are adenocarcinoma, and if you have mutation sensitive, the treatment will be uh, HER1 a targeting agent, one pills a day. It can control the tumor with EGM or mutation sensitive. The very important issue is not don't miss it. If you look, look for it, you will know, you will find. If you do not look for it, you think it's tuberculosis because it's very common, then you will miss it. If you miss it, the patient, the, the, the patient will lose his opportunity to control the cancer and he may die uh, sooner. Okay, the one last question because time is up. Uh, uh, จริงๆแล้วเชื่อเค้าคงทําอะไรหลายอย่างในชีวิตอย่างเช่นเปลี่ยนแปลงอาหารนะเมดิเทชั่นหรืออะไรมั้ยคะหรือแอบโซลูท
uh, recurrent disease after <coughs> surgery, the patient uh, can die at any time. It, it depends on her, his immunity and the biology of cancer. Uh, very difficult for any factor that can uh, stop the tumor growth. Sooner or later, the cancer will come back and it will kill the patient if the patient has advanced disease. Spontaneous regression of cancer is one in one million. According to what I talked to Dr. Manu, very difficult to achieve that. And, and it depends on the biology, depends on the genetic. But, but that patient, they have advanced disease. No matter what they do, the cancer can come back. But why he's still alive and doing well? The reason because surgeon uh, did his best job. He tried to decrease the tumor burden. Once the tumor has to be resected completely, and then the tumor burden in his body is uh, lower. Once the tum well, tumor burden is lower, it takes time for the tumor to re regrowth to the, the, the life-threatening level. That's why he's still asymptomatic. But whenever the tumor burden is high enough to be harmful to his health, he, can, he will be suffer. He will suffer a lot because he denied palliative treatment. If there's no more questions, I think we can close this session. Oh. Uh, I would like uh, among uh, the stem cell that you mentioned because they are very widespread of using stem cell in, in beauty or many things, or even for the people who are old and they want to get in younger. So is it a good idea about the, the, to save our stem cell uh, uh, in, at some place or some point and, and to use it? in the future if there are something happening. Thank stem, you. Uh, stem cell bank, uh, it, it costs you about uh, 200,000 baht. Uh, when, when you have, for example, you have a baby, when the baby born, you can take a cord blood stem cell and keep it in, in the, in the uh, stem cell uh, 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 bank, but they guarantee for you for only 20 years at this, take this time. After 20 years, they cannot guarantee the quality of the stem cell according to the technology. There are many stem cell banks in Thailand, Singapore, many places. You can keep it, but they, they guarantee for 20 years. After that, nobody knows what will be the quality of the cancer stem cell. And cancer usually occurs at the age of 40 to 50 years old. So it's very difficult. If you keep the stem cell forever, then it might be useful. At this time, it's not quite useful, but it's a 200,000 baht service to keep the stem cell bank. So you mean it's better to keep the stem cell when we are younger, right? At the young age, usually the best stem cell quality is the cord blood. That's the thing that you can do. At this time, the, the, the newest uh, stem cell that they use as a source of stem cell transplant for, for anti-aging is, we, we, uh, uh, we call it, uh, uh, I cannot remember the technical name, but what they do, they, they use the, 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 the male sperm and the female ovules. And then they do a, a fertilization in the test tube and then they raise it into stem cell. Because if you fertilize it and you keep it in the uterus, it become a baby. But instead of keeping to be a baby, they keep it as a stem cell. They have some technique to do it as a stem cell. And then they keep it for, for many, many years. And then they can inject into the patient. That's a technique that uh, uh, has, uh, uh, duplicate the, the real human body. Another thing that they are, they are planning to do is do cloning. They can do DNA synthesis uh, uh, exactly to what you who you are, and then they do the stem cell, put their DNA into uh, that stem cell, so that the stem cell will be exactly the same like like what like, like you. So that's another technique under development. But the fertilization uh, is uh, it is it, available in Thailand, underground. Yeah. Could, could more, huh? Hello, please. Can I have a last question? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I just curious. I just want to know um, to ask you about uh, what do you think about pet pity tam? Pet pity tam. because I'm just starting about the herb ball, and um, as I have that a study about it, you know, um, I see many. The patient, they run away from, who have the cancer, they run away from the doctor, veteran doctor, go to pet pity time. And 
mostly what I see, they are is better. Can you clarify what is pet with the term? What is that? I, 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 I don't know, but I don't know his technique. Pet with the term. How? Oh. Um, no, this, yes, yes, this, this one is on more the healing by like a put its way and um, to balancing, balancing on the body, on the lifestyle, everything. Um, like a, you are, you have to change the lifestyle, eating and meditation, exercise, eating the food, um, something like that. So that, 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 that is interesting because that we are talking about lifestyle modification using Buddhism. The, the, the best person to ask is Dr. Mano because he's knowledgeable in Buddhism. He might be able to tell you the Buddhist way to uh, heal cancer because he, he, he is an expert for that field. But for herbal medicine, if, if anybody wants to use herbal medicine, according to my opinion, there are a couple of recommendations you should, you should check first. Firstly, FDA approval. Is it FDA approval by US, EU, Australian, Japan, Canada, all this uh, 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 very high standard FDA, you can, I think it's safe, use according to the indication. Secondly, they must have publication in their peer review journal. For example, American Journal of Chinese Herbal Medicine showing the activity, especially in human, not in the cell lines. It's very difficult to find that information for the herbal medicine. So if you have uh, these two things, that it might be better. And thirdly, is it listed in the guideline by the alternative uh, medicine so medical society? Because there's some uh, international society that they are very high standard professional to check for the guideline. If it's in the guideline, it's approved by the FDA, especially for US or EU. And then if, if there's some publication, the evidence base is okay, I think uh, you are, you are, it will be safer to use it. It will be safer to use it. But the nine pills, uh, healing treatment, I don't know at all. Maybe Dr. Mano may be able to answer this uh, new technique. Maybe maybe better than Pa Cheng. Pa Cheng is very interesting. He, I think they, they, get a, a, they get a very uh, good popularity in this country without approved by the FDA. 